In this video, we're going to have a look at all the various settings available for the Pimax Crystal to help you understand them and get the best out of this VR headset. The focus will be on Microsoft Flight Simulator, but many of the settings apply across the board. Welcome back to the SimHanger channel. My name's Mark. Thank you very much for watching and let's get started. We'll start with a third party application, the Pimax XR Control Center. If you want to know about these and other applications that we'll be covering in this video, then check out some of my previous video links in the notes below. Principally, this application allows you to choose between Steam VR, the default for Pimax, or to change the Open XR runtime to Pimax VR allowing you to bypass SteamVR. When Pimax VR is selected, a number of options are available to you in terms of your configuration. The first setting we'll look at is Prefer Frame Rate over Latency. This is the same as Turbo Mode in OpenXR Toolkit, allows you to load the GPU at the cost of potential increased latency. The second option available is to lock to half frame rate. When this is selected, the system will attempt to lock your frame rate at half the refresh rate of your VR headset. Two refresh rates available on the Pimax Crystal, 90Hz so it will attempt to lock it at 45 or 120Hz 60fps. The effect of this will give you a smoother flight, but it is subject to your PC and your various settings being able to maintain that FPS in the first place It'll make for a more comfortable, smoother VR experience, but if you're only getting 20 FPS, well, this is not going to help you. One personal recommendation when you're testing and establishing the FPS, leave this setting off. Once you've tweaked your system and got the FPS required, then enable it. There is also an option to enable eye tracking. This will work with both the Pimax Crystal and the 8KX, and provides the option for dynamic foveated rendering as opposed to fixed foveated rendering. And the last one we're going to cover is show the mirror window. You would not normally select this as it puts a bigger load on your system, but provides an alternative view. Rather than the normal double pane VR view, it provides a single eye view. Note this is an additional window and not in replacement of. I'll be enabling this window, but only to demonstrate various settings. Recommended you have this off. Let's now turn to the Pimax Play application and note I'm using the beta update 1.3.0. Based on my experience, I think there's a slight bug with this update as every time you restart the system, the room setup pops up, even if you've already set it up. I'm just ignoring it and closing the window. Assuming you've completed the basic setup, let's now head to the device settings. Just make sure your headset is connected and we'll now have a quick run through all the various settings. You can now choose between the two tracking modes, Lighthouse or Inside Out. I'm using Inside Out. You can select the various refresh rates, 120 or 90 Hz. I personally recommend 90 Hz as it will provide most with an easier target to achieve. I'm going to aim for 45 FPS so I can select the half frame rate option. There's the option to enable the eye tracking and that automatically enables the IPD. Not really going to cover this in any detail as I've covered it in a previous video. We're done here. Let's head over to the Games tab. It defaults to Common Settings, which is your global settings. And you can set up different configurations for various applications. But this seems to be limited to the Steam platform. Then importantly is a Render Quality setting. And you have Minimum. Balanced, Maximum and Customize. If you're using the OpenXR Toolkit, you can override this setting, which we'll have a look at a little bit later. I've switched my OpenXR runtime to Steam just to demonstrate this. The current render quality is set to Maximum. Let's see what that is. Quick way to do this is simply to start Steam VR. Remember, I changed my OpenXR runtime. Then from the SteamVR application, let's select Settings, and this will display our current resolution. And here we can see it's 4312 by 5100. 
and that is the rendered image size per eye. Hang on a minute, you may say. The Pimax Crystal has a panel resolution of 2880 by 2880. Why is this image so large? I'm not going to get bogged down in too much technical detail, but it has to do with pixel density required to achieve that image level across an aspherical lens. The great image size is required to cover the whole of the panel and accommodate for things such as barrel distortion. If we change the render resolution to balanced, we can see here it's reduced the resolution to 3232 by 3824. This means less pixels to stretch over the same area, less pixel density, less graphics fidelity. But it means less work for your GPU and CPU to do. The lower resolution, in principle, means more frames per second. So this allows you to sacrifice some of the clarity for performance. Let's take a quick look at the minimum settings. And here the overall resolution per eye has more or less been halved to 2156 by 2552. If you're having to run the Pimax Crystal at this resolution, well you're absolutely not going to get the benefit of its biggest strength, which is the clarity of its display. This would indicate your GPU and CPU are not up to scratch, and would, in my opinion, call the validity of the purchase of the crystal into question in the first place. An expensive headset, but you're not getting the benefit. The Pimax crystal has the highest resolution of any consumer-facing VR headset, but the reality is it's going to take some grunt to achieve that, and some compromise is necessary and we'll be looking at that in more detail a little further on. Moving on now, in terms of the settings, we've got the fixed foveated rendering, but as mentioned before, I've covered this in a previous video, so we won't be spending time on this. The next setting is Smart Smoothing, or Motion Reprojection, which in effect is interjection of artificial frames to assist in achieving the required FPS. Just a note, if you're using this, you should have Turbo Mode off, and that applies to frame rate over latency as well. But in my personal experience, success with smart smoothing has been hit and miss. I have queried this with Pimax directly, and they confirm there's still some work to be done. For now, I recommend you leave this off. Let's move on under the general tab. Nothing really to look at here. This is where you can check your version number. And finally on to the advanced tab. And at the bottom here is the local dimming level. You have four settings off, balanced, highlight and extreme. Local dimming is a technology that can help improve the quality of the image by reducing the blooming or glare, whilst often increasing contrast. This helps reduce the light spill as it were into surrounding dark areas by dimming the backlight in various areas of the image. We'll have a look at a quick demonstration my preference is highlight, and I have found under certain conditions, extreme can cause a slight fogging or dirty window effect. It can, however, substantially enhance nighttime flying. The Pimax Crystal is compatible with the OpenXR toolkit, and for Microsoft Flight Simulator, I highly recommend its use. Let's now jump into Sim, and we can have a look at our settings via the Options and General Options. Just a note for all my tests today, I am using DX11. Let's have a quick look at the VR settings. My anti-aliasing mode is TAA to get the best visual impact. But if you're struggling for performance, certainly try DLSS. The loss of graphical fidelity is nominal. These are my settings, but the best settings for you are those that give you the best performance mixed with graphical fidelity. Note, when we change into VR and look at the same menu, it actually shows us the resolution we're rendering at. Settings are currently at maximum, as we saw earlier. Performance at maximum resolution is not great, so we need to tweak that down using the OpenXR Toolkit and under the System tab. As reported previously, I'm using 3500 by 4142 Gives me a great mix of great graphics and good performance. If I exit VR and re-enter VR, and look at the settings again, I see my new render resolution, 3500 by 4142, is shown there. 
I've been able to get a good performance and locked my frame rate at half the refresh rate and enabled eye tracking if I needed it. I've enabled the FPS in the headset so I can gauge my performance and improvements as I adjust various elements. I'm not using foveated rendering, but it's certainly an option you should consider as it can raise performance from anything from 4 to 8 FPS. I'm not using motion reprojection so I can have turbo mode on. And now it's a matter of you experimenting with eye tracking options, display resolution, and your in-sim settings to achieve a good and acceptable performance. I'm getting a pretty solid 45 at the moment, bearing in mind I'm running the Steam VR window and I'm recording at the same time. But these are my set and forget settings. I can more or less fly anywhere I want with great graphics and reasonable frame rates. I've now switched to DLSS, quality mode, and whilst there's a nominal drop-off, in terms of clarity, the emphasis for me is nominal and it's quite livable. This is now back to TAA mode and with local dimming on highlights. Overhead London, some fairly heavy cloud, but once again a rock solid 45 FPS or thereabouts. It's a matter of trial and error until you get it right. Well, if you've been having any problems getting your Pimax Crystal tuned in, Hopefully this video will have given you some ideas and helped in some way. The Pimax Crystal is certainly not the perfect headset, but it does offer you just the best displays and absolute clarity. If you've invested in the headset, it's worth a bit of time and effort and get those settings dialed in. Thank you as always for joining me. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon and ciao for now.